In the previous video, I defined a locus as the geometric shape that fits an algebraic equation. The circle was the locus of x squared plus y squared equals 1. In this video, I want to focus on one of the basic types of locus, a straight line. Again, I expect this to be review for most of you, but it is a valuable review and useful to set terminology and notation conventions. What equations lead to straight lines? Linear equations. A linear equation is an equation where each variable, x and y, can be multiplied by a constant and then added or subtracted from each other with the possible addition or subtraction of another constant, but no other operations. The variable can appear on either side of the equation, and here are some examples. The line y equals 7x minus 9. You can see the y variable just shows up at itself, and the x variable is multiplied by a constant, here 7. The only other part of the equation is the subtraction of 9. This fits the description and is a linear equation. Also, the line 5y plus 4x minus 10 equals 0. This also fits the description. The only difference here is that everything is gathered on one side of the equation, which is often convenient to do. Here's another, the line 1 5th y minus 2 7th x minus 5 17th equals 0. The constants don't need to be whole numbers, they can be fractions as well. I could take the line square root 7 y equals pi x plus 1 over the square root of 19. The constants can be any real numbers, including square roots or irrational numbers like pi. Finally, if I wanted a general form of the equation of a line, I could write a1x plus a2y plus a3 equals 0, where a1, a2, and a3 are some constants. Any line can be rearranged to fit this form. The locus of any of these equations is a straight line in the Cartesian plane, and indeed, any straight line comes from one of these equations. However, there is a more useful and probably more familiar way of talking about the equations of lines. Here is a line. This line goes through the points 2, 3, and 6, 5. I can define the slope of this line using these two points. First, I calculate the difference in the y-coordinates, which is often called the rise of the line. Here, that difference is 2. Then I calculate the difference of the x-coordinates, which is often called the run of the line. Here, that difference is 4. Then I take the ratio of these two to get the slope. Here I get 2 over 4, which is the same as 1 half. The slope of this line is 1 half. The slope of a line is a measure of how steep it is. High slope is a steep line, and low slope is a shallow line. Positive slope is a line going upwards, and negative slope is a line going downwards. Using slope, I can define the slope-intercept way of writing the equation of a line. This is the most standard presentation and the easiest to interpret geometrically. However, I need one more piece of information. In addition to the slope, I need the place where the line crosses the y-axis. This is called the y-intercept. Using the slope and the intercept, I can write the equation of a line. Here, y equals 1 half x plus 2. In this form, y is alone on the left of the equation. On the right, the coefficient of x is the slope, and the added subtracted constant is the intercept. Let me return to the equations of lines that I used as examples before. The first line is already in slope-intercept form. I can see that it is a steeply increasing line with slope 7, and it goes through the y-axis at y equals negative 9. The second line is not in slope-intercept form. I need some algebra to get it there. I can bring the 4x and 10 to the other side of the equation, then divide by 5 to get the desired form. Then I see that the slope is negative 4 fifths, and the intercept is 2. The third line is also not in slope-intercept form. Again, I use algebra, taking the x and the constant terms to the right side, and in this case multiplying by 5 to isolate the y on the left. Then I can see that the slope here is 10 sevenths, and the intercept is 25 over 17. If I want to express this generally, I write y equals mx plus b. 
The letters M for the slope and B for the intercept are conventional. This is the general theory of the equations of lines. In the next video, I'll do a number of examples for calculations of the equations of lines from various starting data. However, before I finish this video, I want to talk about the special case of horizontal or vertical lines. Let me start with the slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b. A horizontal line has a slope of 0. If m equals 0, then this just becomes y equals b. All horizontal lines have this simple form, and here are some examples. The horizontal lines at y value 6, 4, negative 1, and negative 3. Finally, vertical lines. A vertical line does not have a defined slope at all. Infinity is not a number, and therefore not a slope. Slope is rise over run, and if the run is zero, then the calculation leads to division by zero, which is simply undefined. However, by comparison, if horizontal lines are all y equals something, say 3, then vertical lines should be x equals something, say 4. That indeed does work. And here are some examples of vertical lines at x values negative 7, negative 3, 3, and 5.